So uh, one of the things, once we have the multi-process architecture, you know, and there is only this kind of separate, oh my God, there's only this separated, you know, into its own process, we can kind of split it down further. And I've been kind of like, you know, talking about it as like, you know, where I'm just going to do like a simplified one, but like, say you have like, you know, Fruits Engine. Um, so this is Fruits Engine, you know, I don't like this controller as much. Uh, so this is Fruits Engine, and you've got like, you know, the render. So you've got the render, and that could be like, you know, both like Unity for the time being, or Sauce. And you know, and this is like actually kind of driving this. You know, and this is kind of like, you know, making stuff like render on your screen. Uh, we can split this off further. So instead of just a single render, there's actually another one. And that's an overlay render. Because you can, you know, at SteamVR, you can do overlay apps. So there can be another overlay render. And this can be either driven from the same process. So like this can be driving this, like both these. Or... You know, there can be actually another one, uh, another kind of process for the Fruits engine that is also driving this one. So this one's driving this, and this one is actually communicating with this one. Um, so what the overlay render would do is it would render, you know, your dash. You know, it would handle like, you know, all the kind of like general kind of control functionality. And then the main render would actually be rendering your world. So like when you're like, you know, when you're in VR, you know, like, so you have like your world, you have like, you know, you have your stuff, which is the single cube for this, just to keep doing simple. And then like, you have your dash. You have all your contacts and everything. And this is actually being rendered as an overlay on this one. So like, this is rendering just the dash. And this is rendering just the cube. So they're technically separate. If we split things this way, what we could do, because like both of these are, you know, resonate. What we could do is we could actually make it so you don't need to run this one. So instead of, you know, running full, like, you know, like instead of like being in a Fruits Engine world into being a resonate world, you have just the overlay, you have your dash. And the other application that you run can be something completely else, like a different VR application. So say, for me, I really like playing Minecraft in VR. So you can literally be running Minecraft, you know, the Vivecraft mod. Uh, this is too high. Eh. I'm gonna do Vivecraft. I don't think that's readable, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is like, you know, I'm just gonna do a bunch of blogs, you know, just make sure it's like Minecraft thing. So you have like, you know, your Minecraft stuff, you know, you're like in Minecraft world. This doesn't really like Minecraft, but like, you know, it gives the idea. And you still, have, you still have your dash, which means one of the things you could do is, you know, you can be playing another VR game and still have all your contacts, you know, and still like, you know, be able to use the desktop tab and be able to see, you know, what people are up to and so on. What would be even cooler is um, we can actually have the overlay pick up on that and it's going to show to your contacts that you are currently playing Minecraft and they can still like, you know, message you and do stuff. But this goes even further because the overlay, like it, it's not limited to just the dash. The overlay, it's a resonant word like any other. And you can even have like multiple of them. So what you could do, you could actually let you build stuff in the overlay. So you could, you know, spawn things. And if we have, if we add like a mechanism where, you know, the game you're running, it can actually communicate to the Fruits engine and be like, you know, this is, you know, my, this is the current position in the world. And this is the current state, you know, this is, for example, the current server I'm in, you know, say it says like, you know, this is the server I'm in. We could tie that, you know, into our system. So, um, we could like you know spawn things and the things are gonna get spawned you know in an overlay so like you know, say like you spawn some kind of like node or something whatever reason I think you want to spawn you spawn it in and it's gonna you know render on top of the Minecraft world or whatever you know other application and you could actually be using tools so you can like you know mess around with some stuff sort of like in this 
aug like an augmented reality layer that is resonate on top of another game. And if you wanna, you know, if you're playing with multiple people, and say like you're in the same server, this overlay session can also be synchronized because again, it's it's just another resonate world. It just doesn't have you know any board geometry. It's just the things you spawn. Which means if you're if you're playing on the same Minecraft server, we can sync that up, and the other people they will see the stuff you spawned in. So you can literally be playing Minecraft and say like. You just want to, like, you know, watch a video in Minecraft for a bit. You spawn it in into the overlay. It's, since the position is communicated, you know, we make sure, like, the video is in the same pose for everyone. I should have actually just thrown the video in here. Um, you know, and you're just going to be able to watch the video in Minecraft. Or do whatever, like, you know, you want to do in there as a night. But you do it, you know, in there. So now you can have that. You know, and now there's like a video you can be watching in your Minecraft world. Uh, even better, what we could do eventually with this is like, you know, make it, since it's communicating your position in the world, we can actually render your avatar as an overlay. So you can, I can be in Minecraft world, and I can, you know, still look like this. And if other people are running, you know, the same Resonite overlay, they could see you as this as well. And you can we can have like voice chat because Minecraft by default doesn't really have voice chat, so like you know it can provide like you know that as well. And the more the more kind of you know we communicate from this, you know, say for example we make a Minecraft mod that like you know sends information back and forth, the more integrated we can make it. So say when you when you like you know when you're on a server, we can actually make it so you can through contacts you can send somebody an invite. And if they have the same mod installed, they can just click that invite and it's going to plug, you know, the IP to the server and they're going to join your micro world through the Resonite dash. And it's going to be one thing that's going to be, you know, possible. With that. And the point is, like, you know, it's um, the game that this is running on top of. It can be anything, you know, any VR game. So, like, Resonite can be used as sort of like this kind of like glue layer for a lot of other ones. Um, you could also, funnily enough, you know, you could be running VR chat, for example. So you can be in a VR chat world. So say like, I'm gonna do like this. I'm gonna do VR C. So like in VR chat, you know, and there's people. You're like, you know, hanging out and you want to, and you just want to work like, you know, on your Resonite items. So you spawn it into the overlay, you open, you know, the protoflex and you can be messing on it while still being, you know, in the virtual world. So it can be like, you know, um, here's my, you know, note thing here. I'm like, you know, messing with it in the overlay. And then you save it back into inventory and when you go back into Resonite, you know, you can spawn it. So same here, like, you know, you are, you are in it like, you are in the world, and then, like, you know, you have, like, your uh, protoflex stuff that you're, like, working on, or... And you can, you kind of combine the Resonite with other applications. And I think, like, that's something that can be very powerful and very, like, you know, interesting. Like, in a way where it opens... It opens, like, workflows that, like, I don't think a lot of people, like, even think about right now. Um, so I think, like, once it kind of becomes a thing... Um, I think it will make Resonite a lot more kind of interesting, even to people who don't normally kind of play, because now it offers all this extra functionality for other games. And the more you can also integrate with the specific games, and we would you know kind of provide mechanisms to do that, uh, the more the cooler it's gonna be, and the more capable it's gonna be. You know, because same thing in virtual, if like if, if it can synchronize, okay, I'm in this world, you know, I'm in this like session in virtual, like it, it sends that information over. Then we can, you know, make it so we can send invites as well, and like, you know, maybe it pipes, pipes it back. I don't know, like, you know, what APIs they really have, so like, I don't know the feasibility of this. But in general, like, in general principle, like it, um, like it's gonna work. Um, the other cool thing with this as well is because you have the overlay. I know, like, we should like they use OSC a lot to con you know control things like avatar. You could actually make a thing where uh, you could make some pro like complex uh, protoflex to script some things and then you could actually drive it um 
you know, you can you can have it sent OSC to the VRChat instance. So like you have like a resonate overlay controlling stuff, you know, in the VRChat avatar or world, you know, instead of like making kind of inter like making the applications kind of more interconnected uh, and kind of expanding each other. I know like there's actually a particular thing that like Jack made. Uh, he made like this facet uh, because uh, Jack he hosts um, the event called Z Rave. That's uh, every month. It's like the European sort of like rave event, and it's a crossover event. Uh, it's uh, on VRChat, it's on Chillout, and it's on Resonite. And they always have like a camera that's you know kind of switching between multiple worlds. And it's kind of meant to be like you know this kind of like multi-platform event that kind of you know brings them together. And uh, he actually made a tool like a facet. Uh, I think it's using I forget if it's using WebSocket or OSC, but uh, he made it so he can actually control the streaming from a fast that is on his hand, so he can literally be in the Resonite instance for the Z-Rave, and he's been like, you know, kind of controlling the camera streams, you know, switching between them and like, you know, switching the cameras and so on, all like, you know, while being in, you know, in Resonite. If we do this kind of overlay thing, you know, people who are running on the, for example, VRChat side or the Chillout side, they can they could have the same facet on their hand while in, the, you know, on VRChat or Chillout and use it to kind of control the stream. So, like, if somebody builds a tool in the Resonite that can, you know, help these kind of things, this sort of overlay layer will make that accessible, you know, to other platforms and other games. So this is one of the things I'm particularly kind of excited for just because, like, I got like a feeling this one's gonna potentially open like an explosion of possible cool, you know, interactions and things that like you know the community is gonna do with this. Um, so I really hope like you know like I get to kind of like work on this one, and I I think I think this one's just gonna be like really cool. Like I, I <laughs> um I don't know what else to say at this point. <laughs> But yeah, like uh, I, 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 like once once we have the multi-process architecture, like I don't know like if we're gonna you know do it like while still using Unity or we're gonna do it after we switch to source. But I do want to work on this at some point because I think this could be one of the things that's gonna be really big for Resonite, and it's one of those things like where you know I feel like a lot of people don't even because like for example on GitHub you know we get lots of feature requests and so on, but I think it's one of those things where. A lot of people don't even think this might be a possibility, like they wouldn't ask for it. But once we introduce it, like people are going to realize, you know, this is opening a lot of new options that were not possible before. And to me, like, I really like making those kinds of features, especially ones, you know, which let the community and everyone kind of build on them and make them even more powerful and make them, you know, more beautiful and make like all these kind of cool like interactions that even like, you know, Myself at this point, like I don't even think about it because you know here's a few examples, but I feel like once this is in, people are gonna make all kinds of you know, cool and crazy stuff that like it's gonna blow my mind as well. Even though like you know I'm the one who like originally designed it, so that's pretty much thing. Like uh, having the overlay, having a resonate sort of like an overlay layer, layer um, with abilities kind of interact with other applications and other VR games. I think that's that's the one I'm really looking forward like once we have and just you know seeing what people do with it and how they use it. So uh, hopefully that answers you know that questions. Thank you very much. And then I'm gonna go back to the other place.